I just want to start the vlog off with it's 2.30 a.m. And I just moved into my crash pad. This feels so awkward. Anyways, talk to y'all tomorrow or when I wake up and give y'all an update of life. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. So happy to be back with the camera in my face. <laughs> Never thought I would be saying that. Um, first things first, before I even try to forget, before I even start talking about where I've been and what's been going on, we're going to act like today is December 1st because this video will be posted December 1st. And what happens on December 1st? If you follow me on Instagram, you know that I posted that the company that's near and dear to my heart will be opening their application for in-flight crew member trainee. Um, December 1st at 12 p.m. Eastern Time. 12 p.m. Eastern Time. And then also, the wonderful YouTube has blessed us small YouTubers with the community tab. Sorry, the lighting just got like real nasty. But um, YouTube has blessed us small YouTubers finally with the community tab so I can leave little posts and little chats and things like that and so if you notice that i also posted on youtube that my co that my company that's near and dear to my heart is opening up the flight attendant position once again so y'all are always asking me and i tell you i'm gonna tell you as soon as i find out so the time is now it's today hopefully you're watching this video on the first day that it uploads the first second it hits it goes live um, but yeah, so go ahead, head on over to the company that's near and dear to my heart. And if you don't know what company I work for, I'm sorry, you all ask me in the comments and I just can't tell you. But if you go to my Instagram page, it's very obvious. So I'll put my Instagram right down here, alexianacole.life. And I had the right of way, sir. And, um, just go look and it, it says it, biggest day, but I'm not going to put it on YouTube because I want to keep my job. So anyways, y'all, that's that. I hope you all got your resumes together and um, have been practicing for video interviews, phone interviews, whatever. Um, and then you know what? While I'm on this topic of getting hired, I just wanna give a huge shout out to all of my subscribers, all of my Instagram followers, wherever y'all find me at. Congratulations to all y'all that are applying and moving forward within the process. I get lots of, oh my gosh, I finally got a face-to-face -face interview. And then I get the, oh my gosh, I got the CJO. And then I get the, oh my gosh, I got a training aid and so on and so on and so on. And the best part is, oh my gosh, I graduated training. And y'all thank me so much, but honestly, okay, yeah, I'm, I, I might have played a small little part, real small, because y'all have to do the hard work first in finding me, taking the time to watch the videos, taking the time to invest in yourself and your goals and what it is that you want to do. And then y'all put in the hard work and the dedication to get it done. So I do appreciate you all being so kind and thanking me, but I'm more just proud of y'all for getting it done and sticking through it because the process is not always easy for everybody. Most of y'all know my story. It took me a long time, right? but we're here so congratulations um i got a lot of delta people that are getting cjos and going to training got a lot of american airlines people we got united people we got southwest people we got jet blue people we got people everywhere so don't think just because i work for one specific company go apply where you want and i will help you and whatever resources i have that I can give to you, I will be more than likely to do that. And my videos, they pretty much go for all airlines. The same, it's the same type of deal in most places. So congratulations to all y'all. I know I've been gibbering a lot for the intro of this video, <laughs> but hey, it's day one of Vlogmas, why not? And I've been gone for a while. So anyways, what I'm doing right now is walking from my new crash pad to my old apartment to turn in my keys. So, aww. So this was the room that Fong and I shared. It was 
so many good times in here, but now it's empty. So that's that. I just wanted to do one last little quick walk around the apartment to make sure I'm not leaving anything. Uh, and yeah, so let me turn these keys in and I will catch y'all up. So as y'all can see, I didn't move far, like at all. It's literally at the, at the, at the other end of the block. <laughs> um, so why I decided to get rid of the apartment and get a crash pad. Um, well, one, because I'm in Mint and majority of the time I have a schedule, you know, a lot. And I have four to five days a month that I'm on reserve. I'm actually on reserve today. My reserve block of five days started today. Um, so, with that being said, I usually only, when I started looking at my calendar and my schedule, I was only spending maybe on average six to seven nights a month at that apartment, right? Between having layovers in other cities, going home to Houston, and the nights that I would just spend here, I was literally only spending six to seven nights here a month, and I'm paying rent, which rent wasn't that expensive. Um, I'll go ahead and tell y'all now, I don't really care. I didn't care before, but the rent for that apartment was $2,250. Um, and it was four of us living there. Fawn and I shared a room, and then we had two other roommates that had their own separate rooms. So Fawn's and I room was basically $1,000, and we split that in half, and the other two girls paid for their single rooms. Um, but, you know, like $500 is really nothing to live in New York. Um, even if you are in a semi-private room, whatever, it's still not your own space, but whatever, you know, I'm not here that often. But at the end of the day, I have other financial goals that I'm trying to reach. Um, I, I want to buy a house this upcoming summer. I hope y'all can hear me because this Coca-Cola truck is so loud. Um, and he just rolling on up. Um, yeah, anyways, I have other financial goals that I want to reach this summer, like buying a house. So saving some money towards that isn't bad. Um, and I also didn't want my name to be on the lease anymore here in New York, just because that just ties you into things that I don't want to be tied into. And the biggest issue was, is that our landlord, and the biggest issue is that we did not see eye to eye with our landlord. So I could have really just stayed there and paid the money and, you know, continued to be comfortable. Like finally and I considered just getting the apartment and maybe finding one other roommate because other two girls were still moving out and we just all just let it be three of us and we all have our own single rooms but our landlord it's horrible so we were like you know what let's just get out of there so we've found our separate crash pads fawn is actually she commutes from phoenix now um, she got an apartment in Phoenix. It's closer to her, her dad and stepmom. So she commutes from Phoenix now. I'll, see, I'll still be commuting from home, but we both got separate crash pads here still in Kew Gardens. So she's up the other end of the block and I'm here at this end of the block um, in the crash pad. Anyways, I have such key struggles lately. Um, so yeah, we're at two separate crash pads. Hers is at the other end of the block. Mine is at the other end. I'm super close to the the shuttle. I was already close. Now I'm literally even closer. And the crash pad is $300. I'll try to go give y'all a little mini tour. It's nothing serious at all. It's one bedroom. Um, seven people there. And yeah, that's it. So that's what's going on with my living situation i'm so sorry all these stories are taking so long to tell y'all it's gonna make this video so long but hey stuff 
But that's it, y'all. That's a crash pad. All right, guys. So forgive me because I'm kind of all over the place for day one of Vlogmas. Um, just the past three, four days of like transitioning the move kind of just postponed my plans of preparing for Vlogmas like I should have. Um, but with that being said, you all know last year I did advent calendar, um, which was all fun and cute or whatever. But, you know, like it really doesn't have any real and true meaning behind it. And if y'all don't know, Christmas is my favorite holiday. So um, I'm going to do still kind of like advent calendar style things, but two different things. One I'm going to do is... Um, 25 days of Christmas Bible verses so every day it'll start with a different Bible verse um, and then I'm also going to do a good deeds jar I might just do 12 days of Christmas good deeds jar because I was supposed to have that all prepped and prepared now and it's not so maybe I'll just do 12 deeds or maybe I'll just start it whenever and we'll just go with that and then I'm also doing a vlog myth you want to be in my, you were just, oh, you can be in it. You want to say hi? <laughs> sure. This is my new crash pad maid, Corey. Hello. Hi to Corey. Um, this is YouTube. My oh. subscribers are going to say hi. Okay. It's not live though. It's just recorded. Oh. Then I'll edit it and put it all together and then it'll be like a little video on YouTube. So I get like, I can pose. <laughs> cut this out. Yeah, you can pose. Do what you want. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Sorry, I didn't know that. No, you're good. Um, and then, also, y'all, so I can just, I'm trying to get everything out that I wanted to tell y'all. I'm doing um, Vlogmas giveaways. Yay! Vlogmas giveaways. Every week of the month of December, I'm going to do a giveaway of Alexia's four favorite things. I was actually going to buy things. And then give them away but then somebody kindly reminded me that I have a lot of male subscribers um, and the things that I probably would have bought would have been more geared towards females so I decided to just do gift cards for my four favorite places and if you've been watching my vlog for a long time then you should probably know what those places are um, so it's gonna be a Sephora gift card which men can use because they still have great men products um, a Zara gift card. Um, as you know, Zara sells clothes for kids, men, and women. Um, an Amazon gift card because I shop on Amazon all day long. And then I'm also going to do either an iTunes or Apple Music gift card because I listen to music all the time. And I just figured those would be just good gifts to give. So the qualifications to enter into the giveaway okay so the qualifications one of course you have to be subscribed to my youtube channel you need to be following me on instagram alexianicole.life um and then the main qualification i'm just gonna do like a random question and the random question is gonna come from the vlogs of the month of december from vlogmas so that means you actually have to be watching the vlogs to qualify for the giveaways so I'll post it today is Friday so maybe next week Friday or Sunday whatever just at the end of this week I will post in the vlog what the giveaway is and what is the question that needs to be answered and I will tell you how to submit it and all of that um, but yeah I just kind of wanted to give y'all a heads up of everything that will be included in vlogmas okay um, so while I'm here with my computer so 25 days of Christmas Bible verse day one is John 316. <laughs> uh, John 316, for God so loved the world, he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Amen to that. Amen. Uh, yeah. So I know all y'all are not on a spiritual tip and don't believe in everything that I believe in, but that is going to be included in every single Vlogmas video. So if you're not into it, you can just fast forward through it, whatever. I just want to give y'all a heads up now that I love the Lord. I love Jesus Christ. He is my life and savior, and he is the reason for the season. So we're going to celebrate that this Christmas. Anywho, I'll be right back. 
to answer the questions that y'all posted on Instagram, do a little Q and A session. All right, y'all, let's go ahead and get into some of these questions. If it wasn't a question, if it was just a comment, I'm not going to read it. But thank you so much for all the blessings and kindness and all of that that y'all are always constantly sending me. Trust me. Thank you. I enjoy it. It makes my day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, question. How does a person not get discouraged and give up on applying? Um, there's a second portion to it. I've had the privilege of having two face-to-face -face interviews with two different airlines. But that's all it says. So, not getting discouraged, um, it's all a mental game, y'all. That's really all I can say about that. It's just mental, just keep going. Y'all Y'all know my backstory. I applied for seven years to pretty much one or two different airlines and didn't get in. And then my interview with the airline that's near and dear to my heart, my first interview, I missed it by three minutes and got turned away at the door. So it's just all about perseverance and keep pushing because this is a goal and a dream of yours. And if you do get a little tired, if you do, you need a little mental break, take a little mental break. Stop applying for a while. Don't consume yourself with it. You know, <clears throat> it's okay to have multiple goals in life. So if this is one of them that just doesn't seem to be panning out in the moment, keep pushing forward to something else. And then if God has this in his plans for you, then it will happen. To me, it's, you know, that's, it's, of course, easier said than done, but that's all you can do. Pray on it, work towards it, but keep living your life. Um, what is one thing you wish someone told you before becoming a flight attendant? That this job can be really lonely. Um, yeah, I think that would definitely be what I wish somebody would have told me beforehand. Corey, how long have you been a flight attendant? Oh, six months. Six months. Oh, Corey. So Corey does not work for my airline. He works for a different airline. Yes. The biggest airline in the world. Uh, that being said, I'm still a fetus. <laughs> um, what is the one thing you wish you would have known before becoming a flight attendant? Um, are we talking like one negative thing or one good thing? Either or. Give us both. Um, one of the best things I think, like I wish I would have known, was that I didn't have to be a flight attendant. I could have been a pilot. Okay. Um, okay. So you're just saying that because of like for flight benefits or, or as far as what? Just being able to travel or... I think sometimes I feel like myself personally, I get scared of my own greatness. Uh huh. And so I settle for what I know, like I can see it and I can grab it. Yeah. Instead what of. What seems attainable yeah. instead of like going further. And just going further. Like I feel like a lot of female nurses settle to be a nurse instead, instead of going of to the doctor. doctor. Okay. I, I see where you. Okay. Um, one of the things I, I don't think it would change my mind but it, w it would have prepared me mentally was that I'll be away from my family a lot yeah the loneliness of yeah. it all. Like, that's like, what I, I knew said. I would be away Boy. but I didn't know you how know how they say that no no <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know no yeah. I would be away yeah so yeah that's that's okay. the two things I would say. yeah so yeah y'all um so his last statement just ties back like this job can be really lonely as much as you're with people at a lot of points in time you're still by yourself because these are not people that you you know and love you know these are not your your real friends if you want to put it that way so it can be a lonely job um next question are you planning to stay jfk based as long as I'm with the company that's near and dear to my heart, yes. Um, are you still going back to core in March? And are there pros and cons of doing so? Julian, thank you for keeping me on my toes because I couldn't remember if I was supposed to be going back to core in February or March. So clearly it's March. <laughs> um, and as of right now, yes. There is a possibility that I can bid back into Mint in March. So technically, they will still be sending me to Core. But if there's still enough availability in Mint, then I will bid back in. Um, 
pros of staying in mint is just the comfort of knowing that I'm just going to be working one leg a day and I'll be making more money. Um, cons, you know, just the same destinations. Have I gotten tired of it yet? No, not really. Because I feel like I spread them out enough to where I'm not like back to back to back. Like at one point in time, I was in San Francisco for two months straight. And that kind of got a little draining. But now I've kind of been switching it up and not going to the same cities for every layover back to back to back. Except for last month, I did four Seattles, which I, it started to actually grow on me. Um, but the pro of going to core, if I do have to go back to core and stay in core, and if I get a line, um, the pro, so the con would be going to core that I might actually go back to being on full-time reserve, which is a huge con. Y'all go back to watching my original videos before I went into Mint. Being full-time reserve in core is tough. You know, that's 14 to 16 days of reserve and no guaranteed flying. Um, the pro would be that I would get to go back to seeing other destinations other than those West Coast cities that I go to. Um, you know, maybe get a few more islands and just knock a few more states off my bucket list that I haven't been to yet. So that answers your question, Julian. Um, any tips for internal, uh oh, hold on. Oh yeah. Any tips for internal crew members aspiring to be in flight just applied? Well, congratulations on applying. I don't know if this is a, a, a real tip, but something that peeved me when I was in training about the people that were internal um, going from like AO, GO, or whatever other position it could have been customer service rep, like whatever you're going from to in flight is that you have to be able to take off that hat and then put on an in flight hat. Because yes, we're all one company, but it's different departments and we do different jobs. Um, and the way you handle customers is slightly different than the way we handle customers. Um, and things of that sort. So I would just say just be willing to, um, of course, maintain our core values that we have at the company and really speak up on those and how you, um, how you display those in your everyday in the position that you are in now. And just also express how you would be willing to make that transition um, flawlessly and be open to learning and not thinking that you're a know-it-all. Okay? Um, can you put the same Christmas background music for Vlogmas like you did last year? <laughs> um, what did I have last year? I think what, Jingle Bells was the intro and outro? Like, was it Jingle Bells? Um, I'll throw a Jingle Bells in there for you, but I've already made my intro video, so it's, it's not Jingle Bells, but it is a cute little Christmas song. What is the best base at the airline that's near and dear to your heart? And did setting up the galley come natural? the best base see I don't I don't like to say I mean there's so many ways to to weigh out a base for what's gonna work best for you so best base if we're talking about that has the most flying hours where you're probably fly the most that's gonna be JFK JFK has the most flying hours out of all bases um, but if you live in Orlando Boston Fort Lauderdale Long Beach those bases might be better for you because you can be at home at night. You know, like, those, th that makes a big difference. So, but if you're just looking as far as, like, where you're going to get some of the best trips, the, the better trips, I would say JFK. Hi, Alexia. Hey, Serge. <laughs> Do you miss working non-mint flights? If so, Why? Uh, and that kind of ties back into the pros and cons of going back to core. Um, it's going to be a yes and no. It's a 50-50 answer because I've just gotten... Oh, so I didn't finish answering the second part, the second portion of this question. See, y'all, here got my mind bouncing all around. Did setting up the galley come natural? Um, I, would, I would say so. I mean... 
when you work once you work your first flight or two or three um and especially if you're in a position where you're setting up the galley like the number four on the aircraft or whatever or the number three depend or the two i mean heck it just depends on what plane you're on um but yeah like you you learn from the people that you're working with the people that are more senior to you if they're really nice they'll show you their ways and then you you adjust and do your own ways or you do what's comfortable for your crew and um you'll learn that most people kind of tend to do it one way you may tweak or do whatever another way but setting up our galleys here isn't hard at all like it, i mean we just set up the cart and push now so it's it's pretty much usually very organized as far as compartments to me that's the hardest part is learning or remembering on which aircraft which compartments hold what but um other than that yeah i mean after a few trips bing bam done like when i'm up front and mint i don't even have to think about what compartment has what like i already know i can find it with my eyes closed um so yeah back to serge's question uh do you miss working on mint flights if so why yes and no 50 50 um yes just because every now and then i do want to go to some other destinations um but definitely not now not in this season of irops um irregular operations where snow and, and windstorms and water and rainstorms and all of this are causing crazy delays and air traffic control delays and i don't miss it in this season because it meant like yes you get delayed but since we're our own base there's not much more that they can do with you if i'm in core especially if i'm on reserve i can end up anywhere and work crazy long duty days and i'm not here for that um so no i don't miss it for that but yes i do miss it just every now and then just if you know just to go see somewhere else that's really it i mean the customers uh i treat all customers the same i don't care how much you pay for your ticket i don't care if you're a non-rev if you're flying standby i don't care i don't care i treat everybody with the same utmost respect you know like when you're in mint we do have a different standard of service because you paid for that but as far as my personality and, and, you know, all of that, like, I give Mint customers and core customers all the same experience to a certain degree as far as what is standard. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we work some flights that are in core that are known to be a little crazy or, you know, full of wheelchairs or full of people that order all seltzer all day or people that want three three different drinks at one time you know like all of that but you can get that on any type of flight so that is that y'all um that's all the questions that we have so let me just think was there anything else that i really wanted to update you all on for vlogmas i don't necessarily think so um I know y'all probably want to go see me fly and you know go on some layovers and all that but i'm on reserve this week so i can't really control that it is one up oh, i'm actually off reserve done deal <laughs> it's 1 16 p.m done with reserve for the day um i'll get a schedule for tomorrow the board is just so empty there's nothing for me to even prep bid for to try to go to work there's no trips to pick up like this is a tough month um so yeah anyways i'm gonna go ahead and end it out here because it's probably already got awful long i am sorry but i hope you all enjoyed it um hopefully these videos will get a little more fluid i guess i feel like i'm a little i'm a little rusty at the vlogging but i'm getting back to it um so yeah anyways make sure you stay tuned watch every vlogmas video so you can be a part of these giveaways and hopefully you'll win one of them um yeah so until next time make sure you subscribe like and share bye